Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. But what I want to tell you, church, today is that as you listen to them, you know, about two weeks ago, they came up here, the whole team was up here, we laid hands on them, we prayed for them, sent them out. Uh, they flew back yesterday, uh, so you guys are truly mad for Jesus, <laughs> so, you know, not, not uh, coming in from yesterday, and they go back to work, some of them go back to work tomorrow, so, um, but what I want you guys to hear today is that, you know, these are amazing people, you know, they're, they are incredible people, but they are not any more special than you or I are to God. You and I have the same mission that they have, and that's what they went out there to do. You know, we have a, I was talking to Rena, we have a mom of four that left her four kids here to go with more kids. <laughs> Madness right there. You know, we have an executive here. We have somebody that just started a new job that told his employer, you know, his, his, uh, his uh, future employer, hey, I have a mission trip that I'm gonna go to. We have an accountant, you know, we have workers right here that, you know, have, have done that, but we have the same opportunity to do what they did in Mexico here, where your mission is. Your mission field is at your work. Your mission field is on the road to your work. Your mission field is in school. Your mission field is, you know, maybe in your neighborhood, in your home, your neighbors, your, your complex, wherever it is that you live. So as you hear them today, I, I want you to capture that heart, and I want you to take notes, you know, take notes from what they have amazing nuggets. I, I want to tell it all, <laughs> but I won't. I'll let them tell you. Um, and we're going to start right here with the amazing Rena. <laughs> uh, I, I just wanted to share a story. Um, we, we were asked to prepare like a two-minute testimony before we went, and we were supposed to share it on the Sunday at service, um, and God obviously has different plans. So Travis and I, we ended up sharing our testimony the next day with the kids, and our innkeeper has two kids, Rafa and Andrea, and they're teenager and you know I think she's 10 10 years old um, but Rafa he came on he came with us that day to to help translate so I, I shared my testimony you know and he he was listening and he came up to me later and he asked me about it you know and he, he was like he he was interested in you know the emotional aspects of before and after you know and he, he mentioned he mentioned that he was interested in in all of it because he He's, you know, he likes psychology, and so I actually have a, a psychology background, so he was able to talk to me, you know, with all the jargon and everything, and we connected. Um, we, we ended up having lunch together and having a long conversation, and he ended up opening up to me. You know, his, his parents are divorced, and he shared with me some things that, 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 he, that he had deep inside that he had never shared with other people. He shared that with me, and um, God had reminded me that you know, you're so focused on, you know, oh, I'm going to, I was focused on, oh, I'm going to, you know, share with these kids and bless these kids, but God had another plan to bless somebody else, and, and he heard it, and, you know, I was able to minister to him, and so um, just, we don't know what God has in store for us when we, when we live out our faith, when we live out our walk, and my, my scripture is in Romans 1, um, sorry, it comes up. You could read the whole thing if you want. But right here, it says God's way of putting people right shows up in the acts of faith. So as we walk out our faith, you know, he gives us more faith as we continue to be bold and to share. Yeah. But also, we just don't know who needs that hope. Yeah. You know, we don't know the darkness that people are carrying, you know, the brokenness that people are carrying. So, so. That's awesome. Thank you, Rena. Give it up for Rena. Hi, everyone. My name is Patty, and I lead the mission team with my husband, Gus. Um, as Rena mentioned, we all, we all went out there with a purpose and a plan, but God has other <laughs> plans for us. Um, during the second day of our trip, we had one, went out to a, do a, an activity with uh, some wood carvings, and um, I met with the store owner maybe uh, halfway uh, during the, the project, and uh, she started to sh I sh asked me what the purpose of our team, uh, our visit was, and I shared with her the, the school and um, the, what we're doing for the children out there. And she started to share with me that uh, there's days that her family makes about $10 a day. 
-hmm. and um, that they they live in poverty, and she understands the importance of education. She was very grateful for our team and everything that that we do for the children out in Oaxaca, and you know, in that conversation, she started to open up with me and share a lot of her private um, personal life. Um, what I took from that was, you know, I didn't pass any judgment because there was just a lot of um, funkiness in her home. And I told her that um, if she wanted God to bless her home, she had to make some corrections first and do things in order. And um, then, you know, have a plan, not just, you know, it's always good to pray to God, but have a plan in place. Yeah. And, uh, you know, coached her through that. But during that process, uh, I asked the team if we could pray for her and her family. And um, we did. We came around. It was a large group of us. And gathered her family along with her aunt and her other family members, and we all mm -hmm. prayed for them. And what I took from that was that, um, you know, again, we have a plan and a purpose to go out there to administer to children, but it doesn't really matter. It's, you know, you come across people every day in your everyday life. Yeah. And uh, when given the opportunity to minister or speak love into someone's life, don't pass judgment, just to love them yeah. through that. And um, our mission work starts the moment we walk out through those doors. You know, it doesn't really matter. You don't have to be in another country. Yeah. It, uh, you start ministering or you start showing the love of God anywhere you're at. It yeah. doesn't, you know, you, you shouldn't be tunnel visioned and focused on one, one thing. You should open that, that love for everybody. Uh, so it's just, again, I encourage you all to not limit yourself to uh, thinking missionaries uh, yeah. in another place. It's actually outside those doors. Love it. Awesome. Oh, Thank I you. I also have my verse. <laughs> you have your verse. My verse was First John 4, 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who love is born of God and knows God. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Before you go, Richard, I, you know, I just touching on that, what you said, you know, it's, um, it's, it's the love of God in action of everywhere that you go. And, uh, I know Patty, I know Patty personally, love Patty and she's a planner. She's a meticulous planner every single moment every single thing uh, you have to know that this trip was prepared from last year so from last year they have been planning they have been you know scheduling they have been doing all of these things but then God just comes in gets in the mix and the plan was and is and was accomplished you know to go to the kids of the school in Oaxaca um, but God had a plan and I want you to think about this this woman this owner of the shop they were in a workshop you know and uh, doing alebrijes and and you know learning how to do some woodworking but I wonder how many times this woman prayed to God and said, God, I need your help. How many people are out there praying and you're the answer? And it took a team from Oaxaca, you know, it took a Patty that, you know, was, was planner. And God said, no, we're, we're, we're going to change the plan a little bit here, Patty. And now she not only brought love, she not only brought the hope of Jesus, but she brought a plan to that woman that needed the plan. So that's, that's how cool our God is. Go ahead, Richard. Hi, I'm Richard. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yes, um, I want to share with you a, a moment that we had this past Thursday. Um, we had the uh, opportunity to take the children on a field trip, and we went to a place uh, uh, called Monte Alban, which is where um, the uh, original Zapotecan uh, culture was at. Um, and when we, were, uh, when we arrived, we had a tour guide that was with us, and his name was Abraham. And uh, we were blessed because he spoke both English and Spanish. Um, so in the very beginning, he began by speaking in Spanish and English to us so that we could all receive the, uh, the history of the, of the area. Um, but shortly after he began, then uh, Gus uh, graciously helped out by doing the English <laughs> translation so that he could focus in on the Spanish and on the actual information, not having to translate in his mind for us. Um, and uh, at the end of a very wonderful tour where he was so knowledgeable and he uh, provided the children with a lot of information that they could um, understand the culture of the area because it's just outside the city of Oaxaca uh, where this is at. And um, um, after the, the tour, um, I, I felt, you know, God say that we needed to pray for him. And um, at that moment, you know, the children were being excused to kind of go into the shade because it was a sunny day and we all had sunblock on to prevent sunburn. Um, so we let them cool off, but it was myself and I went over to Gus and I mentioned to Gus that I felt like we needed to pray for him. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and Gus had a, a, it responded, but I'll let him tell you about that. Um, so <laughs> um, he came with me along with Kike, who you saw in the video, and the three of us went over to him and I asked him, you know, um, if we could pray for him. 
and he was immediately receptive. He had a hat on for shade. He took his hat off his head and tossed it to the side. He had a stick that he was using for pointing out things and for drawing examples in the, in the, in the dirt for us. Tossed that to the other side and raised his hands and I asked him, you know, what can we pray for you about? And he said that, um, you know, that his, that his home was in disorder right now, that his family was arguing, um, that they had disagreements, um, that things just weren't as he would like it to be in his home. Um, so, so we prayed, and Kike led the prayer in Spanish, so that way Abraham could receive the full blessing uh, uh, from Jesus uh, on his life. Um, I prayed in English you know, for his home to come into order, to have peace and prosperity fall on him and on his family. And uh, you know, Gus prayed in English, he prayed in Spanish, <laughs> he, he prayed in, in the spirit, um, which was wonderful. Um, and at the end of the prayer, um, you could just see the gratitude in his face, um, you know, because he didn't come expecting to be prayed for. He came yeah. to provide to us and not really expecting to receive anything in return, I believe. Um, so it was a wonderful experience, and we embraced him and thanked him for his time. Um, but it was interesting because, you know, we went to Oaxaca to love on the children, uh, to, to bring Christ to the children, but you just never know who you're going to meet and who might need um, Christ in their life and need prayer. So to be able to provide that to him was, was a blessing to us, as I'm sure he felt blessed also, um, which ties into the verse that I chose, which is Ephesians 6, 18. And it says, um, pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayer and requests. Mm -hmm. um, with this in mind, be alert and yeah. always keep on praying for all of Lord's people, um, which I think is what, what we did. God sent us there, not just to love on those children, but to, to love on the people that we interacted with, not just him, but there were other experiences too where we had the, the chance to pray for people who weren't expecting us, like yeah. the shopkeeper of the Alabrijes. Um, it was a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to share God's love with him. Yeah. Uh, uh, as Rich mentioned, uh, it was just interesting for me that one of the main things we focused on in our preparation, like someone mentioned, it was like a six month preparation, getting ready for this trip. Our main focus was us being together as a team and working as a team. And as we're finishing up uh, March Madness, you know, uh, what are you doing, a team church that we've been talking about so much, that was exactly uh, what this was about. Uh, my wife and I said we're leading the team and our tour is over. And as you guys that know me, I'm usually business. Let's go, let's go, I'm busy, I'm busy. I got things going on. We keep moving, and I tend to lose sight of what our true calling is, what our true purpose mm -hmm. is. So on this trip, our tour is over. So Rich comes up. He's like, I got a question. I'm like, hold on, Rich. I got a question. <laughs> hold on, Rich. Let me, let me take care of this guy. I got to, you know, take care of his services. Yeah. And he's like, guys, are we going to pray for him? <laughs> and right then, it was like a smack in my face. I'm like, oh, there I go. I, you know, I dropped the ball right there. But we are a team. Yeah. You know, I'm there leading this team, but I can't lead it alone. And he mm -hmm. came, you know, Rich came alongside me just, Gus, why are we here? Re mm -hmm. To remind me. I, get, I tend to get wrapped up so often with, uh, with the logistics and the busyness of, of getting things done. But that's where we come together to lift each other up. You know, where the word says that, you know, two are better than one because if one falls, yeah. the other is there to pick them up. Yeah. That's exactly what my brother did when I should have been the one initiating, but he was there. And that, that goes for everyone here. You know, those of you that, that are here serving, if you're not, you should be. <laughs> but, you know, team church. There's a card <laughs> and the seat. Exactly. <laughs> you know, whether you're leading or you're, you know, someone else is leading. Yeah. You guys are one working together yeah. for the same goal, the same purpose to bring people to Jesus. And like I said, I was so focused on the logistics. I got to keep the book square. I got to make sure I keep my notes together. He was more worried about this man's soul. You know, and it was very convicting and humbling, and just an honor to truly be with each and every person. And there's just endless stories we could share about how we came together. Mm -hmm. You know, my wife and I were just heads ready to explode with so much stuff we got going up, but everyone was there to do their part and to, mm. to step in and help. And again, just like we said, just, uh, just team church. Yeah. Us. Yeah. As, as a church, we have five values, you know, that, that we do. And one of them is right there. If you read it, it says we value teamwork because we is better than me. And, you know, Gus, you, you were focused on, on what you were doing, but then God was like, I'm going to send a Richard that is going to be, you know, alert to this man's needs. And, and you prayed for him and blessed him as well. So that's awesome. Hi, my name is Becca, and I've been um, serving in the iBrew Cafe for a while. And it's so exciting to hear the wonderful things that are going on um, down in Oaxaca in the school with the kids. Um, and so I was, I was so excited to be able to go and see it firsthand. And something that God spoke to me on that trip 
was um, he said specifically, don't let your focus be your limit. Yeah. And so um, our focus of the trip was to go and to love on these children. And what God told me through these experiences that we have all been um, describing was, that's your focus, but don't let that be your limit. Take the time yeah. to pray for the people who need the prayer, yeah. to minister to those people who are hurt and brokenhearted. And that's another place that that really spoke to me was at the orphanage. Um, it was, he, God was just saying, you are also here to minister to these children, but when you go home, that can't be your limit. These yeah. children can't be your limit. There are brokenhearted people right in your neighborhood, um, your coworkers, your neighbors. Um, and like Pastor said in the video, John 14, 18 says, I will never leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Mm -hmm. And there are so many people around us that need to hear that and hear the message. Like we sing in worship this morning, in our Father's house, there's a place for them. They are a child of God. Yeah. And there's so many people that that don't know that, they don't feel that. But it, And then if we just go show them God's love, that the love that God has for them, um, they need it just right in our backyard. That's awesome. I'm going to clap to that because that's amazing <laughs> right there. Don't let your focus be the limit. I'm going to take, take that home. I'm going to tattoo that too. <laughs> Megan, talk to us. Hi, I'm Megan. Um, I really um, took God a lot from this mission trip. Um, I prepared for about six months for this trip, and we got together t um, each month to get to know one another, and um, we were ready to go and bless the kids, and that was our main purpose is to go and do that, but we didn't realize that there was going to be distractions. There was going to be discouragement. Um, I think four of us were sick. I, I think it was like a domino effect. We each got sick. Like I, we had fevers, colds, mm -hmm. you know, just all kinds of things were coming in to try to discourage us and to take away our main purpose for being there. But we were able to, because we've been together, to um, be there for one another, to lift each other, to pray for one another, and to just walk each other through whatever the emotions or whatever was going on in our hearts and to just remind each other of what our purpose was and it was to be there for the kids and to love on them and to share God's word with them, not even just with the children, but with the staff, with the cooks, with the yeah. teachers, you know, the merchants um, at the Sokolo, anywhere where we were at, we were able to just see and, and pray and love on them. And um, it was just such a, a blessing to be together as one and just full of love that God, you know, has given us. And my my scripture, I had Colossians 3.14, and it said, and over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Yeah. And I believe as a church, you know, he has united us in perfect unity. He will always have us together and ready to go out there and to share his love and to share his word with all those who need it. So we just got to keep lifting each other and praying for one another and just being there and, and reminding each other of what our purpose is That's that awesome. God has given us. God-given purpose. Hi, I'm Jen. Um, I think like a probably a large number of our team members, I don't speak Spanish. And so as we were preparing for this trip and especially the week before we went on this trip, I was terrified about how I was gonna communicate with um, these kids and the people over in, in Mexico because you know, they speak Spanish, I only speak English, how are these two gonna marry? Mm. And um, <laughs> what it kind of came down to was the very few words that I do know in Spanish I was able to use, and then you just have to kind of use an action to describe what you want from them or what you need from them, and we were able to make it work. Yeah. So while I was there, I started wondering, how can I use this at home? What am I gonna do when I get home? Yeah. And it's the same kind of situation. I'm going to go to work on Tuesday because I took Monday off. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I'm going to go to work on Tuesday, and I don't speak the same language as they do anymore. Mm -hmm. When I became saved and when I started going to church, I had to learn a completely different language. Yeah. And so how I'm going to have to use an action yep. to show these people not my love, not Patty's love, but God's love. Yes. And yep. it... it it's kind of is just that simple. You know, the Bible says in First um, Corinthians thirteen seven, love bears all things, regardless of what comes. Yeah. 
believes all things, looking for the best in each one, hopes all things, remaining steadfast during difficult times, endures all things without weakening. And so it's, it's just that simple. Love's not just a word or a feeling, but it's an action. And so uh, when I go back to work on Tuesday, I'll be putting that into action. I love it. That's awesome. Be before you go, guys, you know, I, I asked them, like, you know, by show of hands, how many of you guys speak Spanish? So right here, we have two, we have two and a half, you know, over here. How many of you guys are bilingual out there? You know, okay. If you're not bilingual, don't worry. You just became bilingual today. Today, you will go out there and you say, I am bilingual because I speak the language of love. And that is what we're going to do. Again, as they're, you know, we're repeating it over and over again because that is something that, you know, they... It, it took them going to Oaxaca, but it's not going to take you guys, you know, doing that. You're going to learn that today. That today we walk out there, and I'm going to stand up because I just I can't sit. <laughs> but, um, you know, we, we take that language of love everywhere that we go. Like they're saying, and, and this is what it looks like. We don't speak the same language, but we can. And we can be the translators for what God is trying to say to them. Because somebody may have told them something that wasn't what God said. Somebody may have told, you know, the people around you a lie that you need to translate and say, no, that is not what God said. This is what he said. He loves you, period, no matter what. And that looks like maybe buying something for a coworker that doesn't speak the same language as you, speaking another language. Bring him, you know, bring him a donut and some coffee. Bring him some Oaxacan coffee, <laughs> you know, from some coffee from Oaxaca. Bring him to church, invite them, take him out to lunch, speak to them. If somebody, you know, is, is, is going out there with, a, you know, with an attitude or, you know, having, find out why. There's a story behind that, and God wants to heal it, and he wants to use you. They're going back to their mission field. You're going back to yours. You are the vessel that God wants to use. So I'm going to sit back down. I'm going to let guys talk, but I want you to take that home. Well, you, you just narrated our skit that we did for the kids. Uh, sorry that about was, that. That was the theme. <laughs> That's that awesome. That the theme that we had. And I wasn't even there. Right. This is God. It, it doesn't matter what people speak into your life. Yeah. Just listen to what God is speaking, mm. speaking life into you. Yeah. But anyways, back on track. Uh, my name is Gus. <laughs> uh, this was, I believe, my 12th trip uh, down to Oaxaca. Uh, I've been a part of this from the very beginning. Uh, before any of the kids uh, set foot into this facility, you know, I was already there, a part of this, just feeling, you know, just moved and compelled. Hearing Pastor's vision, I had to go. Yeah. You know, and being there from the very beginning, I've pretty much seen it all. The good, the bad, the ugly. I've seen all the disappointments, you know, the breakthroughs, the frustration. Uh, but I think the most important thing that I've seen through this all has been the growth. Mm. The growth that I've seen uh, in the school and the church, uh, the growth that I've seen in the, the teachers and the staff, but especially the growth uh, that I've seen in these kids. Uh, I could sit here and just share countless stories mm. of all of these kids. Uh, having been out there quite a bit, I've had uh, the opportunity to just really just be there with them. Uh, I'll just take the time. Uh, well, I was told I'm on a time limit, but I'm going to no, talk go about ahead. two. Go ahead. Go uh, ahead. One of them is, uh, you know, one of our kids who has uh, special needs, very high energy, can't stay focused. His name's Julio, 11 years old. Uh, he started with us last year, and when he started, he uh, he was put in the in a preschool group. 11 years old, 10 years old at the time. He had no, he couldn't read, couldn't write. Uh, basically, he was doing a finger painting, learning letters, learning numbers. Uh, fortunately, he made it through the year, mm -hmm. as did his teacher, Jimena. They both survived. <laughs> Praise the Lord, we pray for them. <laughs> yes. So uh, something that I thought was amazing, it showed just the, the maturity and the development of these teachers, is that they mm -hmm. decided, you know what, we're not going to leave them there. We're going to raise the expectations that we have for this child. Yeah. And they put him into the elementary group. And while he was there um, in March, and no, I'm sorry, this is March, in mm -hmm. September, uh, my son Marco went out there. And he's got this amazing video of, you know, he's behind the classroom, and he's taking a video, and you see Julio in the front row sitting there attentively listening to the teacher. You know, teacher Rocio, she's speaking, uh, you know, teaching the lesson. And he's just, like, kind of nodding his head and just in, in understanding. He's receiving it. And... At one point, you kind of see a little confusion, raises his hand. Mm. This is a kid who the year before, you couldn't get to sit still. He was con literally bouncing off the walls, wow. climbing on stuff, tearing things up. Not that he was throwing a tantrum. Yeah. That's just, he didn't know how to express himself. He had all this energy, didn't know how to use it. So he's sitting there raising his hand. Teacher explains it to him. And you can just, like, you can see this light bulb just go off. You know, he got it. Mm. He's writing it down. He's just nodding his head and just goes back to listening. 
Wow. And it was a 90 second video maybe. And this is a kid the whole time focused, listening to the teacher. A kid who could not sit in his chair the year before for nine seconds. <laughs> So to me, that was just amazing. Yeah. We fast forward three months to this last December. I was out there uh, visiting the kids for our uh, Christmas event that we do for them. And I'm talking to Julio. We're outside in the courtyard. We're talking. And his teacher comes up. He's like, why don't, Julio, why don't you go get your workbook? Show Armando Gustavo what you've been learning. Mm -hmm. So he just takes off running. He comes back, and he's just a ball of excitement. He just shoves <laughs> it at me. And I'm like, let me, let me open this thing up as I'm trying to open it. He's like, fumbling, just, just gyrating, just wiggling, trying to open it up to show me, you know. And, you know, and, and uh, Rocio's kind of helping him out. He's like, show him, you know, how to write your name. He was like scrambling through, showing me, pointing what he's wow. been doing. You know, he can read, showing me that he can read, that he can write sentences. And I'm like, oh, this is awesome. You know, and I'm like, this is the, the work that he was given. And I'm like, oh, good. He's, you know, he's working his way through, he's like a third of the way through the book. And that's kind of when uh, Rocio shared with me. There's a pr there's a process when we when we accept kids. They have to go through a screening process, and part of that process is taking a uh, psychological exam. And the report that was given uh, to the school by this uh, psychologist, whoever took uh, did this exam, was that he does not have the capacity. He will never be able to learn. He will mm -hmm. not be able to read or write. That the best hope, the biggest hope we had for him was just to get him to just behave a little bit. Wow. That was all the expectation. That's what's so amazing about the, the growth of the, of the staff, where he said, no, we're, gonna, we're not going we're gonna, to we're not gonna speak this death over him. We're going to speak life. Yeah. We're going to expect more Amen. from him. Yeah. And what really got me to beyond that, it was just so amazing to me, is that I'm like, cool, man, he's already like a you know, almost halfway through this book. Hmm. He's like, that's not the one we gave him at the beginning of the year. Wow. We gave him a different workbook, wow. and he plowed through that one. It yeah. was already, you know, almost halfway through the other one. And this is a kid, they said, is not going to be able to read or write. So that's just, it, it was just, to me, it's just an amazing thing of how God is moving. And it wasn't just us that are there. You know, like I said, I've had the opportunity. I've been so blessed to be able to, able to go visit them uh, more than most. But it's not just me going there that's having an impact. It's everything that each and every one of you are doing. You know, yeah. when you guys, with your prayers, yeah. they're felt out there. And they're, they, they are finding their mark out there. And things are growing, they're developing. Anytime, you, whatever you do here, you go to Hybrew, all the proceeds are going straight out there to provide this facility, the materials to get the, the, the staff and the teachers. And these are all volunteers. They're not, they're not paid to be out there, but they right. just have such a love and a faith and the hope for these kids that they are out there pouring into them. Uh, one other, I'll share another story about another kid. Uh, she's a, she's a, one of our youngest ones. Her name is Kelly. She's, uh, I think she just started this year, I believe. Late last year, possibly. Uh, when I was out there in December, it wasn't a business trip. Like, you know, like usually like this one, I'm always busy. Mine's, you know, on the business. I got to get things done. That was more of a relaxed trip. I was able to spend some time and just love on the kids, play with them. And I love kids, but... I don't do kids well, my wife, <laughs> as my wife can attest. But that gave me the opportunity to really play with them. Mm -hmm. So I, I taught these kids how to play dominoes. Seven years old, she's just uh, just learning. And she uh, she kind of figured out where she was going ahead of me, plays her dominoes, and she blocks me. I'm like, ah, all right, I got to pass. <laughs> and she caught that. She just, remember, I just taught her how to play. Mm. She caught that. So the next time she comes around, she just kind of looks at me, puts it down, knows what I, knows what I have. Mm -hmm kind of figured out what I was, what I couldn't play, blocks me. And she just starts mocking me. <laughs> like, little, 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 little. 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 <laughs> so those of you who are, you know, uh, Latinos know what that means. That's how you, you know, that, you That's the somebody. mocking, like, ha-ha. <laughs> and it just, it just kept going on and on. Cool. So we go to this trip. I, like I said, I didn't have the opportunity to really sit and spend time with them. So I had one game. Just, we're going to play one-handed dominoes. I sat down, and uh, we're playing. So she ends up dominoing, you know. And I'm like, all right, I got to go. Half the team was already gone. I was just going to be the last one out. As I'm walking out, she's just, again, she's just going, you know, little, little, <laughs> you know, I beat you, I beat you. And Becca happened to be there. She's walking. I don't know if you remember this because she's just going on to Becca. Like, I'm just going on. Basically, I'm going to come back tomorrow, and when I come back, she's going to give me another whooping. And all, all I see is Becca, Becca just like, just smiling and nodding. She probably had no idea what was going on. I love it. But it's just amazing with these kids, the potential that they yeah. have. 
she was just taught. Yeah. You know, seven years old. Yeah. The same little girl when we're at the museum. We're at the museum, and she, uh, I had a, another group of kids. So she's sitting there explaining to the kids one of the displays what it was and just going on. Then I'm like, like, oh, you know, she just, she, that's what she heard. She's telling them. I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, well, I'm just reading what this says right here. Oh, really? Read it to me. I didn't think she could read. I didn't know it well, that well. Mm. She's like, no, I'm tired. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> like, all right, well, how about this one over here? This has got, you know, it's a lot shorter. So she's there reading every single word. She stumbled on one, like, the start of one word. Wow. But she was reading it. Mm, I don't believe you. How about this one? <laughs> and again, just hit yeah. every single word. And to me, that's just so amazing, the, the, the potential that these kids have. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's just amazing. Yeah, I, I mean, I, li I like what you're saying, just erasing the expectation. Because, you know, we have to remember that the literacy level in Oaxaca is so low. It's the lowest in the country. You know, so some of these kids, they would have grown up to become what they were told, and that was no expectation. Just like Julio had no expectation. So, you know, today, as you walk out there, think about your expectations that you have set for yourself. Raise your own expectations. Man, I may not be able to go to the trip. No, raise that expectation and say, yes, I can. Or maybe if you can't, raise your expectation and go out and buy a cup of coffee because this is impacting you know, kids, not just in Oaxaca, but globally. It's called eKids Global. And you know, just don't, don't, don't forget, and I, I'm loving, you know, I, I, I still am thinking about, you know, man, Rena. Four kids, and you went out there to be with more. <laughs> and then you're coming back, you know, to the kids. And, and you know, but God, God refreshes you when you do that. He refreshes your work. It's, it's not a burden when you're working for God. It's not a burden when you're doing things for God. And I love, if you don't know the story, the origin, you know, of how this got started, it started out because our pastor was on another trip, you know, down in Mexico. He loves coffee, had a dream, had a vision of owning a coffee shop, went to Oaxaca, you know, on just a little short, you know, a little short trip was sitting down and there was a child that came to sell him you know the, the the candy that they sell and he learned about his story he took the time to say oh you can't read you, he couldn't read the menu so that is how God just dropped the bomb this is my version by the way <laughs> um he dropped the bomb in his heart to say open for me a school in Oaxaca and here we are three years later our second full team mission team and we are seeing the, the future that God has. And the beautiful thing is that we are, you know, we're not going there or telling them, you know, that there's a better life somewhere else. God appointed them to be born in Oaxaca, and they are going to change their generation. They are going to change their town. They are going to change their state. They are going to change their country, and they are going to change the world. And I'm going to tell you, yes, we can say praise God to that. But I know you didn't say your scripture, I'm going to say it for you because you already had the mic. But, you know, in, in Jeremiah 29, 11, you know, I love what you said at the 8, that this is a scripture that we just say over and over again. But let it mean something for you today. You were born for a purpose. You are sitting here for a purpose. God knew when he created you that on March 24th at the 10 a.m. service at Elevate Church in New Hall, that you would be sitting here and this is and, and and God had a purpose for you. And that purpose is not only for your life, but for somebody else out there. Because if it wasn't for Gus being born, this young man Julio, you know, if it wasn't for Pastor being born, if it wasn't for people, if it wasn't for you donating and being here and doing what we do every single week, then we wouldn't have this opportunity to have this amazing team and this amazing opportunity. So um, I want to tell, you know, Patty, I know we talked about sharing some of the most memorable moments and you shared about I'll let you tell it. So um, that pastor had asked us to share something that impressed on us when we were there, but he also asked us to share maybe some, uh, like a favorite moment or a funny story, and uh, I wanted to talk about a favorite moment. Uh, there were many favorite moments, but um, every morning we would wake up around 6.45, and we would do devotional. We, uh, the hostel that we stay in, it's, it's, it, on the rooftop, it's beautiful. You can see the sunrise, and you see the countryside. And we'd get up there, and um, Rebecca and um, Jen led us uh, through devotional one morning, and they really uh, Rebecca brought it home where she it touched on, touched me because she said, "What we're doing here, how can we apply it at home? Mm -hmm. It shouldn't, you know, we're on this high and this this feeling of um, you know that we're just you know we have a purpose, and but then we come home and we stop." So that's why we really did talk to one another and minister to one another that, that we need to not stop there, that when we come home, that we need to talk to the people that are around us every day. And that really, you know, um, affected me. Yeah. 
because I, again, I, what I said is, um, our, you know, we're all missionaries and we don't stop here in church. We, you know, we go out and we just need to apply our love outside these doors. Yes. And that's what impacted me the most. Yeah, that's my awesome. favorite time. You know, and uh, one of the things is you mentioned how it's just so refreshing. Uh, one of the experiences that I had, another rooftop experience, mm. you know, there was just some amazing things happening at that, at that facility up on, on the, the top floor. I'm, I'm just, I'm always busy. I'm always running. Uh, and it's a struggle for me, daily struggle here to just make the time to just be still and know that he is God. Mm. And that was one of the things I went out there with, with the intention of, you know what, I got to find him. I got to make the time. And uh, Saturday night when we flew in, Sunday, a lot of things weren't lining up, weren't falling into place. And me being a logistics guy, on mm -hmm. schedule, got to mm -hmm. be on point. Mm -hmm. Why aren't we there yet? Why aren't we there yet? And a whole mm -hmm. lot of things out of our control. It was rough for me. I get up there early. Uh, I'm up there by myself uh, Monday morning. I needed some time with the Lord. And as I'm there, uh, you know, I'm like, I'm just going to read and just see where this takes me. I read maybe one or two scriptures before the Lord just started just pouring into me. Just, I felt a presence. I felt his presence like I hadn't felt in so long. And I was just, I was overwhelmed. I was literally overwhelmed. And as people are start coming up, I'm like, I, I can't let them see me like this. I just kind of mm. go to the corner and I'm just, I'm trying to regroup. And the Lord just, as I, I'm like, all right, let me just settle down. Let me get, get compose myself. He just keeps just pouring. I'm just feeling just this overwhelming sense of love and peace. And more people are coming up. And I'm starting to get myself together. All right, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. That moment, I just get bumped. I look <laughs> over, and it's my daughter. Mm. And just the love that I felt right there for her, you know, it just, and I just felt the Lord just tell me, what you're feeling right now is nothing compared to what I feel about you. Wow. Just that love. Yeah. And it just, I just, again, I'm just overwhelmed. And I'm like, go away, go away. I, just, <laughs> I, can't, I can't be out there like this, you know. I can't let this team see me like this. But, you know, I say it doesn't matter how busy you think you are. Yeah. You know, you, you will find the time. And, you know, and it's something like what they were saying. What are you going to bring back? Yeah. What am I bringing back? I'm going to be very intentional of making that time for these moments with God. Yeah. He is so hungry for us. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it's not just that we are hungry for him. So are all those other people that don't really know him. Yeah. Look at all the stories and the examples. What were they saying? We came to minister to the kids, mm -hmm. but it was all these other people that we came across. We didn't expect them to, you know, oh, they're going to need prayer, but these people are hungry. Yeah. There are so many people outside of these doors. That is your mission field. And, you know, and those of you that are thinking, well, I can't, you know, I can't go out there. We are having, uh, next month, we're having a meeting, an interest meeting, where now you can start signing up, go on our app. Look up uh, the uh, 2020 uh, missions trip. Sign up. We'll get you the date where you guys can come out, get some information. No commitment. We're just we want to just cast the vision, share it with you guys, give you some uh, some basic information, and then you guys decide then and there. Yeah. So uh, yeah, any you guys have any other any questions? We'll be outside where you guys can talk to us. Yes, yeah. And, uh, you know, Becca mentioned something earlier, you know, just about just the joy of the Lord being your strength. Uh, Becca and the team and everybody that, you know, we're team church, you know, we're here. They get here at, what, 6 a.m., 5 a.m.? Yeah, you know, to, to get here. And this is just a refreshment of what we do and why we do what we do. Why do we open our church, our church doors? Why do we have a service on a Sunday? Why do we have three services on a Sunday? And that is for every single person that is out here in the city of New Hall, in the surrounding areas, to experience the same love that we have experienced, to experience the love that God had for us, for you. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.